Ciao a tutti! Today you are going to learn the most complete and fully comprehensive technique to supercharge your rulo tango adorno. I'm Silvia Mezzasoma and this is... Idea Tango. If you have never been a ballet dancer in your life, making a proper tango rulo might be one of the most difficult body coordination in tango. The reason is simple. Your body needs to be fully conscious about legs turned in and turned out. It needs to control a completely different coordination of the two legs at the same time. And luckily we have only two legs. And it needs to use the dissociation in a perfect timing with the legs movement. So, nope, not a piece of cake. But through my specific and unique exercises, you are going to build up the muscle memory that your body needs to completely transform your tango rulo experience. You are going to work with nine exercises to correctly build up your rulo technique. Yep, many, but needed. As usual, I'm going to show you my secret exercises first and then I'm going to explain in depth the technical hints to execute them correctly. Exercise correctly 5 minutes a day every day and in no time you will transform your rule adorno. And remember, to be always timely informed about new releases of technique videos, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to turn on the bell to receive the notifications. First of all, let's build the awareness of the leg turned out and turned in. Stand on one leg and project the free leg in front. Now turn the free leg out, in, out, in. Collect, project to the side. Turn the free leg out, in, out, in. To the back, project out, in, out, in. Collect, repeat with the other leg and as many times as you want. Now, let's exercise the movement of the free leg. Start with the free leg projected backwards and turned in. Bring your free leg to the side and at the same time turn it out. Now, keep the leg turned out, bring it to a diagonal forward and then bend the knee, always keeping the leg turned out. Now, project backward and at the same time turn the leg in. Whilst keeping the leg turned in, bring it to a diagonal backward to finally collect. Back in, side out, forward out, bend out, back in, diagonal back, collect. Repeat with the other leg and as many times as you want. Now it's time to add the coordination of the standing leg. Whilst bringing the free leg from the back to the front and bending the knee, the standing leg does the first half of the pivot, 90 degrees more or less. Whilst projecting the free leg to the back, to the diagonal backward and collecting, the standing leg does the remaining half of the pivot. First half of the pivot, second half of the pivot. Exercise also with the other leg and as many times as you want. And now let's see how to use the dissociation to make it look like, whoa! Normally, when you execute a rule of forward, you are in the position of an osho forward. Therefore, when you step, you are already dissociated. When you transfer the axis to the front leg, dissociate even more whilst holding the back leg, until you reach the maximum of your dissociation. Now let the dissociation go and start the movement of the free leg and the standing leg. Repeat with the other leg and as many times as you want. And if you want to go a bit above the lines, here are the exercises for the high rule of front. But please don't do it in a crowded milonga. Stand on one leg, project the free leg backward, lift the lower part of the leg, bring it to the outside and then collect. Back, up, outside, collect. Exercise also with the other leg and as many times as you want. Now, let's add the full body coordination. The dissociation and pivot coordination work exactly like for the low front ruler. However, now the free leg goes from back, low, turned in, straight to diagonal front, up and turn out. When you bend the knee, the leg remains up. In the second half of the pivot, keep the leg up, bent and turn it in. 
to then bring the lower part of the leg outside and collect as done in the previous exercise. Straight up, then turn in outside, collect. As usual, exercise also with the other leg and as many times as you want. To have a fully comprehensive technique tutorial, we cannot neglect the back ruler. Let's first build up the movement of the free leg only. Stand on one leg, project the free leg forward, turned in. Bring it to the side and keep it turned in. Whilst bringing it to the back, start turning out the free leg. When you reach the diagonal backward, bend the knee whilst keeping the leg turned out. Now project forward, always with the leg turned out. Then turn in to collect. Front in, side in, back out, bend out, project forward out, in, collect. Repeat also with the other leg and as many times as you want. And now let's add the coordination of the entire body. If you prefer, you can add only the coordination of the standing leg first to then add also the dissociation. Once again, the dissociation and pivot coordination is the same as for the front ruler, but reversed. Normally, when you execute a back ruler, you are in the position of an auto backward. Reach the maximum of your dissociation before letting it go and start the movement of the free leg and standing leg. After a half of the pivot, your free leg is bent and turned out. Use the second half of the pivot to finish the movement. Collect to prepare the next step. Maximum dissociation, first half a pivot, second half pivot, collect. As usual, don't forget the other leg and repeat as many times as you want. And finally, the high back ruler. Same coordination as for the low back ruler, but this time the free leg goes from front low turned in straight to diagonal back up turn out. First half pivot, the leg bends, stays turned out and up. Second half pivot, project forward, always turned out. Turn in and collect to prepare the next step. Diagonal back, bend, project forward, collect to prepare the next step. Don't forget to train also with the other leg. And lots of times. For the first exercise, it's important to learn how to dissociate the movement of the free leg from the rest of the body. Remember that in tango, the standing leg and the upper body, including the hips, belong to our partner, whilst the free leg belongs to ourselves. This applies to both leaders and followers. Therefore, it's important to learn how to move the free leg without bringing along any other part of the body. Therefore, when you rotate the free leg, make sure that the movement generates and remains in the hip socket of the free leg and you don't move neither the other hip nor the upper body. Pay attention not to turn too much in the free leg. The turning in ends with the knee, ankle and toes on the same line than the hip. In the second exercise, when you bring the free leg from the back to the front, make sure to turn it out on the way, otherwise you cannot produce the circle of the lower leg. Also, make sure that the free leg arrives until a diagonal forward. Indeed, if it's too much to the side or too much to the front, the circle of the lower leg will be very small. Finally, after you have done the circle with the lower part of the free leg, which is the first circle of the ruler, make sure to bring your free leg from a projection backward to a diagonal backward, as this produces the second circle of the ruler.
you can play with different degrees of diagonal backward, from just a little bit up until the side. The more to the side the free leg is, the bigger is the second circle of the ruler, but also the slower. When you want the coordination of the standing leg in the third exercise, make sure to start the movement of the free leg first and then the pivot of the standing leg and not the other way around. After the first half of the pivot, stop and check the position of your legs. Make sure that the free leg is still turned out, the knee bent and the heel pointing towards the standing leg. Make sure that the free leg completes its own movement during the second half of the pivot, so that when the pivot is over, the feet are together. When using the dissociation to add power and effect to your free leg, pay attention to few things. When the leader starts leading the pivot, this is the moment when you want to deepen and hold your dissociation without rotating the hips. This builds up tension in your body that you can then release in your free leg. To build up this tension whilst increasing the dissociation, make sure that your hips remain parallel to the floor. Also, make sure that your back heel keeps the position as if it was attached with a string to the opposite shoulder blade muscle. If you let your hips or your heel go, you cannot build up the tension in your body and you might end up with a banana foot. Once you have reached the maximum of your dissociation, release the tension in your body by starting the rouleau. Don't hold the dissociation too much beyond what is necessary, otherwise you will block your partner. When you release the tension and start the rouleau, start with the movement of the free leg, immediately followed by the pivot of the standing leg, and not the other way around. In the high rouleau, when you exercise the circle of the lower part of the free leg in the fifth exercise, make sure to move only the low part of the leg and nothing else. When you execute the high rouleau in the sixth exercise, make sure to bring your free leg from a backward projection straight to a forward projection without passing from the side. Also, when the free leg is projected forward, it's not completely in front, but it's a little bit towards the outside diagonal. This will add more three-dimensionality and circularity to your rouleau. When you bend the knee of the free leg, the thigh remains at the same height and turned out. During the second half of the pivot, the free leg remains bent and turns in. Finally, the circle of the lower part of the free leg produces the second circle of the ruler. So, don't miss it! All the secrets of the low front ruler also apply to the high front ruler. Therefore, use the dissociation to supercharge the effect of your ruler. Wait until the maximum of your dissociation, hold it for a millisecond and then start the ruler. Start the movement of the free leg first, immediately followed by the pivot of the standing leg. After the first half of the pivot, check the correctness of your position. Coordinate properly the movement of the two legs so that when the standing leg has finished the pivot, also the free leg has finished this movement and is collected again. For the back ruler in the eighth exercise, the coordination of the turn in and out of the free leg is the opposite. So you start with the free leg projected forward and turned in, you bring it to the side, keeping it turned in, and only on the way from the side to the back, you turn it out. Once again, the free leg arrives only to the diagonal backwards and not to a complete backward projection before bending the knee and projecting again forward with a turned out leg.
The most important point of the rouleau bag is not to hit your partner's legs whilst bringing the free leg to the side. Therefore, the projection to the side should be quite small. When you add the dissociation and the coordination of the whole body, the points of attention are once again the same. Arrive to the maximum of your dissociation and hold it for a millisecond through the opposition of the leg projected in front before starting the rouleau. Start the movement of the free leg first, immediately followed by the pivot of the standing leg and not the other way around. After half of the rouleau, check your position. The heel of the free leg shall point towards the standing leg. This time, to give more visual effect to your rouleau, once the standing leg has finished the pivot, the free leg remains projected forward. You collect only when you prepare the next step. For the high rouleau backward, the coordination is exactly the same as for the low rouleau backward, and so are the points of attention. This time, though, the free leg goes from a forward projection straight to a backward diagonal up and turned out, without passing by the side. Once again, make sure not to hit your partner on the way. When you bend the knee of the free leg, the thighs remains at the same height, and so when you project forward. When you execute the high rollo backward, you can play with different heights of your free leg. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date. Just click on the subscribe button below this video and turn on the bell to receive the notifications. And now, tell me about you. With which of the rollos are you going to experiment first? Tell me with a comment. Practice at home and enjoy your technique exercises.